Hello everyone and welcome back to Programming Chess Game Design with me. So in the last lesson we were looking at the condition of stalemate, I'm just going to close this, and we uh, finished with that. Today we're going to start looking at checking for the condition of checkmate. So I've already gone ahead and changed the code because well the change isn't too big. And I have a few things commented out just so that my code works for the time being. Uh, and this we will move on to uh, doing in the next lesson. So what I have done, let's start off. The main changes are again in the check situation of board. Inside of here, I clear two other lists as well. Those two lists are white pieces attacking king and black pieces attacking king. So I defined them at the start of my class, as you can see over here and they are lists of pieces. They are going to be serving the purpose of us being able to know which piece is actually attacking the king and causing the check. So with checkmate we are also going to be working on conditions for check so if something is attacking the king then you can't make uh, any other moves other than to protect your king. So that's why I have this more specifically. And how we fill those two lists up, after clearing them, we clear them each time because the situation of board changes each time. Uh, I fill them up just over uh, here. So what you should have is this if statement and just closing with white attack moves dot add in between. But instead of that, well not instead of it, but on top of that I've also added this if statement. So what I'm looking at is again the all of the valid moves or king can't move move here moves of J which are pretty much all of the elements or all of the pieces and then if it is a null uh, and the valid move the piece in square is king so if the move that we're looking at is a king so if the piece has a move attacking the king basically and uh, we're looking at whether it's white or black because so that, uh, to know which list we should add it to uh, we add it to white pieces attacking king and this would be the black king and so we fill up that list in that way this is prob probably going to have a maximum of two elements but I don't see because I don't see any other way of having more than two elements uh, if you are blocking something and then if you somehow make it move and then attack the king uh, but that shouldn't matter anyway even if it is three in the end we're going to try to make it work even with three even though I don't think that that's ever going to happen because well if you're in check you have to move your king away from danger or block the attack uh, the same thing or similar thing we have it for our black moves so I've again gone ahead and added this over here the save statement which checks the same things but this time instead of checking that it's not uh, white we check that it is white so that it is attacking a white piece and not a black piece and then we just add it to black pieces attacking king we do also oh actually okay, I've already explained that I was looking at it but yeah I have explained that so that's fine another change I actually made to uh, this is that well instead of straight up, straight up returning the game state first of all I declare a variable called update state of game which is a game state and then uh, instead of returning I just assign a value to update state of game and that's going to help us with the following because we might not want to return it straight away we want to check if it's check then we want to see it might be checkmate as well so we need to make sure that it isn't checkmate if we are returning check and otherwise so as you can see these two uh, ifs uh, check that it's it that the game state is check if it isn't then it just returns stalemate normal yeah a stalemate or normal However, if it isn't checked, then we check for checkmate at the same time, just before this. And if the conditions are correct, I'll explain how I checked that over here, then 
I make update state of game uh, to be equal to game state white in check and that is what's going to be going to be returned. So again these two are just opposites, one is for black, one is for white. There is probably a more efficient way of doing it but uh, I'm not too worried about that for now. Uh, because you can probably just merge them together and look at the different kings. So what we have here for, I believe this is for white in check, as you can see. Uh, update, get, if uh, we are saying that white in check, white is in check, then we assume that he's also in checkmate, or she. Then for each square n in all squares, so we are looking at all of the squares on the board, and more specifically, more specifically, we look at all of the pieces which are white. Now, uh, this is a function which I haven't made yet. Uh, it's over here, or a method which I haven't completely finished working on yet. But what it's going to do is, well, you need to pass it three things. You need to pass it uh, the piece which is going to be defending your king. You need to pass it the pieces which are attacking the king, as well as the king itself. So n.piece in square is the piece that we want to check whether it can protect the king. Uh, black pieces attacking king, well that's the list we just made and that gets filled up with all of the pieces which are potentially attacking the king. And then we pass the position of the king. Or the king itself actually, not just the position. Because we already have the position so we can use it and we've done that in the previous lesson. And so if that statement is correct, so if this if this method cor uh, returns true, then we say that white is in check because well our king can be protected, and so there's no need for it to be checkmate as well we can uh, block the opponent's move, and so uh, update state of game. However, as you can notice, I don't uh, use a break statement anywhere. And this is because I actually want this to be run for every single piece on the board that is white to check, uh, to make sure that the piece can only move to places where it would be protecting the king. And to make sure that all of the other pieces won't be able to move. Because that's what check does. You have to protect your king. And this is the same thing just for uh, black in check. Then on to my method, uh, as I said uh, before, I haven't completed it yet and this is going to be a shorter video as uh, you can probably notice, but this is what I have so far. It's red because, well, you can read there, not all code paths return a value and because we're saying it's a boolean it has to return a value somewhere in all of the branches. I'm not going to go into this now because it's, it pro it's probably going to change. So another thing that I changed was, um, let me just find it right now, in end of turn stuff, uh, as you can see state of game, so the variable which we declared to hold state of game, the main state of game over here, uh, in end of turn stuff I make it equal to check situation of board. Beforehand all we had was check situation of board here without being it being equal to anything but I think that this is a better way of doing it so that well we know what state of game it is at any time of the in the program and yeah so in the next lesson we will probably mainly just be working on this and other things connected with that such as well how uh, well how do you deal with check why where can a piece move or not move when in check we will also need to be working on uh, making a piece immovable if it's protecting a king at the same time. So, for example, if you have a queen uh, to the left of a pawn to the left of a king, where the pawn and the king are of the same color, then you shouldn't be able to move the pawn forward. However, in our program right now, we are. So we will also need to be working on that. So, however, because I am not going to make this any longer, as I have nothing to talk about right now, 
Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please give me a like, share, and subscribe. It encourages me to make more videos such as this one. If you have any questions, do feel free to ask in the comments down below. I know that this video might seem kinda quick because, well, I had already written or typed everything out, but hopefully you were able to follow along. If not, as I said, do feel free to ask in the comments down below. I will be happy to answer as soon as possible. So until next time, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.